Boy, I really wish I knew more about the original Blind Bag series. Well, you're in luck! Because <gasps> Brian, is that you? I'm here. I returned for your adventure of throughout the Halo Mystery Packs, and we're gonna Brian. go through them. Now, can you're I get back. a Coke, though? Oh, you want a Coke? Yes. Yeah, just just help yourself in my fridge. We're recording okay. this in the same room, clearly. <laughs> All right, hello once again, YouTube, and welcome back to The Domain in collaboration with Tower of Ultimate Doom. We are here today to continue our epic campaign to review every single Blind Bag series. And I've been saying to Brian recently, I feel like we're doing some kind of, just a little bit of a historic service here. It is genuinely difficult to find all the information about Halo Mega Bloks Blind Bag series on the internet. Some of them are not even on Mega Bloks website. So in the first episode, we reviewed series one to nine of Halo Mega Bloks Chase or Blind Bag series. And you can check that video out. I'd recommend watching that one first. And today we're gonna continue our campaign against the humans and review Alpha series through to Foxtrot. I'm joined today by the the amazing, superb Tower of Ultimate Doom. Thank you very much for joining me today and helping me on this epic quest. Yes, I am Ultimate Doom, and I do also have to say one thing. In the previous video, I had mentioned that I'm missing a whole bunch of stuff, but thanks to my friend Chris Vellner, he actually sent me a lot of the missing stuff, like the Green Elite, but mm. I really love the fact that now I have a Series 4 Cortana, so now That's I have epic. the entire ah. Series 4 lineup up there. Ooh. That's Series 4 Cortana, man. You can't, you can't be a collector without it. I'm very happy that, uh, you are able to connect with the community there. Our Mega Constructs community is insane and it's only getting bigger by the day. We are starting with Alpha series. And let me just explain here. Mega Bloks made Halo Blind Bag series one to nine, and then they had a bit of a conundrum, right? Because they don't know whether to go into series 10. I thought they would. I was very surprised that they didn't, but then there's also a lot of reasons why they might not have. They went from Halo Series 9 to Series Alpha, and then they kind of went through the military alphabet with Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo, and Foxtrot. All very epic series. And Brian, can you tell me why Alpha is such a standalone series compared to Series 9? Because they have rotating elbows and arms and, and waist rotation and other Removable shoulders! Shoulders! <laughs> Yes, we got new articulation, removable armor pieces at the exact same time. That's probably why they went for a new name change to Alpha Series, because they wanted to make it fresh, brand new style. Like, new articulation, most would say was long overdue, and really they were kind of running out of creative options, if you ask me, in the Mega Bloks line. Like, they'd just been repeating everything. It was kind of losing its fanazzle for Nazzle Dazzle, they spiced it up by including removable armor. What do you think of the original set of new articulation figures, Brian? Well, when they first started out, I was a little concerned because I was mm. thinking, oh, they, they have a lot going on for them. Is there going to be too much of a height difference? But I think they did a pretty respectable job with uh, yeah. the designs. The only thing I don't like is attaching the waist piece and the blind bags and then the sets. Oh my god, getting those attached is a pain. It is a bit of a pain. They started with the UNSC figures, Marines, and Spartans, made them new articulation, and then slowly rolled out to elites and brutes and grunts, and now we've even got like jackals and skirmishes that are new articulation. It's Which crazy. Even hunters. Which, it, it makes sense to start with the Spartans because you have so many different armor types that you're gonna swap mm. out. Mega Bloks had prided themselves on an enormous amount of paint apps on their old articulation figures. You just look at that brute captain from this series, he's got paint apps running like stripes on his legs and arms, he's got silver detailing on his helmet and shoulders, he's got so many paint apps. And then when you introduce new articulation, some of them are a little bit bland. The Green Scout and the Yellow Master Chief, they don't have any details to them. The Spartan Gungnir is the exception because it's got a really cool black speckled effect, which I really like. I don't, but yeah. So there was that issue at first, but new articulation was uh, a double-ended sword because you had that problem with lack of detail, but then you also had the removable armor giving so much more, like with the Marine. This Marine is one of my all-time favorite figures. I absolutely love it. Oh, we're gonna go straight to giving you guys a darker skin tone Marine as like the common one as like the one that you can just army build and grab whatever it's super cheap yeah i thought that was a cool idea i really want to see 
a new articulation Halo 4 Marine with a removable helmet. I think that would be badass. Especially the gold goggles. Also, what is up with the green scout getting a plasma pistol? Like, what is going on there? I don't know, uh, but I still need that green scout. Every series comes with a grunt, and you can't really knock the grunt. It's, it is what it is, though I do find the white teeth to be quite weird. This AC Brute Stalker. And I was just in love with this guy. You hear me talk about the Half AC Skirmisher in Series 9. I love that one. But this one is so cool because it actually came in two variants. The AC on the left side of the Brute or the right side of the Brute. And you could add to that customization option there. On the packaging, you could see them fighting in a Halo 4 map. I thought that was awesome. We're talking about the AC figures in this set. Holy moly. We've got a purple AC Jackal, then a red AC Spartan Recruit, the legendary Smoke Gray ODST. Oh, of course, oh. ODST. No. But this ODST is like one of my top 10, maybe top five ever figures. This AC Chase ODST and Smoke Gray as well of all things. My thing is that why do we have an Arctic Gunganeer as an ultra rare, or not an ultra rare, but a rare, and then we also have one in the Revenant Raid. It's like, what's the point? We can just get it in the Revenant Raid! We don't need this! I'm pretty sure the Revenant Raid was quite rare. Well, that's Alpha series, man. Like, it was a very well-publicized series. You could find it very easily. It was one of the last series to actually be stocked locally in UK supermarkets and toy stores. Especially that ultra-rare Brute AC Stalker. This gives it- I give- I give this one a very high rating. So Alpha series, the perfect introduction to new articulation, rolled straight into Bravo series. Now, what I love about Bravo series, I gotta point this out, you've got a lot of generic figures. You've got a green mm. marine, you've got NMPD, mm. you've got a green Spartan, but you also have some very interesting ones, like the, the red skirmisher. The purple brood is also pretty good, you know, for continuing that mold. You know, that elite ranger is really cool. It's a rare because I think it was the only time we would get this until they moved on to the new articulation. They upped from eight to nine figures for whatever reason. Mega Constructs did not do a good job with this product photography. We have the Brute shot from the Brute upside down. And then we also have the Flood Elite head upside down as well, which is pretty amusing. But yeah, it's it's a phenomenal series. That Marine, I think, is everybody's all, one of everybody's all-time favorite figures. I used it a lot in my new Mombasa dioramas. I love how the light green blends to dark green further down its body. I love how the Flood comes with that little Forerunner, little the, the, the Guilty Spark guy. I, I thought that was a nice uh, combination package. And what was cool about that, too, is that you have two figures with a clear rod, so you didn't yeah. know which one you were going to get if you're just looking for that. So that was a nice touch. Yeah, the Guilty Spark goes down as one of the community's all-time favorite figures. And also, we don't get many examples where a mold was specific Perfectly cast for a blind bag series, so very nice to see. The Grunt, again, weird white teeth, I don't know what that's about. The NNPD Officer also went down as like one of those most collected figures. I bought, I would guess about 15 or 20 Bravo series to get all those NNPD troopers. There was an interesting haul video I did, and we bought a load of Bravo series packs on Facebook Marketplace, and they were all NNPD troopers. It was a very weird thing. I don't know how many police officers. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. There's so many marines. All the power. And we also saw the introduction of the brand new mold energy sword, which is a pretty fantastic one. It's so weird, because like you have one Spartan with the old one, and then you have the elite with the new one. And I think the NMPD officer was an example of Mega Construct saying, no, we can give an exceptional level of printed detailing to our new articulation figures. This is strange, because this is a series where we only got one Spartan. And this brute as well, he had a very funny face, but uh, I liked him all the same. Bravo, Mega Constructs, bravo on series bravo. We got to talk about the gummies, Brian. We got two gummies in this series, and I think this is the first example of them transitioning down to two gummies. I think we only have two after this one. What I really like about these gummies, by the way, and it follows through with Charlie. Throughout some of the series, they would just have random gummies that don't really have a figure to kind of match with it. They kind of started to do that because, of course, the Red Elite Honor Guard, you know, it would typically be seen in red. The JFO would later come out, or I think actually at the same time, as the Covenant Drone I think it was Outbreak? The yes, one with the right. George. So you could pop and swap them 
quite easily. Yeah, absolutely. And All keep right. an eye on that green has up, by the way, when we take a look at the next series. Ah, a little tease of that. Well, let's roll into Series Charlie then. I guess we're doing it now. So, Series Charlie, very interesting one indeed. A lot of really sweet molds, and the first time we see a new articulation elite. And he's looking good. The Centurion Spartan, you can pretty much now get it for cheap because it comes in orange, and I love that, especially mm -hmm. the package design. That was a nice mm -hmm. idea. All right, Series Charlie. So we've got the Spartan Soldier, which I, I always just love the Spartan Soldier in Halo lore in general. So some pretty interesting Spartans, the Soldier, Grenadier, Centurion, and Orbital. And I guess Bravo Series, Mega Constructs looked at Bravo Series and said, oh, there's only one Spartan. Let's put four in the next one. <laughs> so very heavy UNSC forces. And we've also got that white pilot and also has a very nice tan undersuit on the back of his legs or the inside of his legs, which I did enjoy a lot. We've got another grunt with those white teeth of death. They creep me out. Alpha, Bravo and Charlie all just had the same grunt, different colors. And with those teeth that stare into my soul. But it's in gold. Uh, gold is pretty cool. The Red Storm Elite, amazing, and just a great first example of an Elite in new articulation. And then we gotta talk about those Jackals. Those Ooh. absolutely gorgeous Jackals. I love them so much. Alpha Series had the Half AC Brute Stalkers, then Bravo took a break, but then Charlie hit home again with AC Jackal Sniper. AC Jackal Snipers are the things of nightmares, bro. That half left or half right AC effect. But this time in Alpha Series, it was subtle that there were two different brutes you didn't actually know. But on Charlie Series, it shows the two Jackals in packaging. I really like how this came together because you have different uh, types of Spartans. You know, you gotta reach one in the mix, so that's good. They didn't completely forget about that. I love yeah. the Cyan Soldier. I mean, with the black details, it really mm. highlights it. And then Cyan, I love the Cyan. Color. Orange Centurion's great. I like the Arctic Pilot. Shouldn't have been a rare, but it's a nice nod to the Series 3 Arctic Pilot, so they updated it. I never know. I feel like to like passive collectors, Spartans sell better than Elites. But to people that actually want to make big dioramas, elites might sell sell better, honestly. Because, like, I can just get one of every Spartan, and I'll have an army of Spartans, but for elites, I need to army build, like, 10 or 20 to, like, have all of the elites that I need, you know what I mean? Charlie series was a fantastic series. We also were treated to two beautiful AC figures, which I know one of them is probably people's all-time favorite, the Smoke AC Emil. He goes perfectly with the Smoke AC ODST. He has an incredible shotgun and ah, uh, it's an it's an awesome Emil. So they just released a meal with the Ultra Mongoose and they had this one alongside it. Then we also got a pretty cool green AC Hazop as well. Hmm, didn't a... we see this recently in the Bravo series? You just mentioned that, Brian, yes. He comes with a grenade launcher, and in Bravo series, we had a green Hazard. So it was the perfect opportunity for some good old pop and swaps. And Charlie series, I think, yeah, I think it went down in history as a pretty badass series. What was your favorite figure from the series, Brian? I love the pilot, I love the elite, but I gotta say that Spartan Soldier because it's Cyan. Yeah, <laughs> I would say the same. That's Cyan Spartan Soldier, and maybe the Ace, half AC Jackal as well. The elite wasn't given enough time to shine in this series, but he had many opportunities to in the future. So, Charlie was a pretty excellent series in general, and I just absolutely love that Smoke Grey Emil. It is total quality. Charlie rolled breezily into Delta. Delta was actually, interestingly, it's a series that you can still buy today, which is quite unique for Mega Constructs. I don't really know of any others that you can buy so freely as Delta. The UK still has a lot of stock in mostly like eBay stores. Kind of weird when I see people uh, just go to the store and they, they, they oh, uh, here's Delta. And meanwhile, my yeah. stores don't even have the new stuff. Delta series was some serious quality. I absolutely love this series. I think definitely what people would say are the standout figures of this set are the Halo Wars 2 Marine, that flood form and the elite. Now, I mean, we'll start with that flood form. There was a Cyclops set that had it as well, but that's it really. And that that's crazy, right? To have such a beautiful mold from such an iconic game. But I think maybe the problem was they brought out the mold too late, right? And then by the time they brought it out, Halo 5 was already on the way. They ditched that, that 
entire flood mold for Halo 5. It is kind of weird that we never got a, a multi-pack of that type of flood. Uh, yeah, there, there are yeah. so many chances that they could have used it. Out of all of Delta, that's the only one I have a second of, because at that mm. point I was trying to just buy at least one of each. They finally changed up the Grunt after three consistent series of the exact same Grunt. They changed it to the Grunt Ultra. The Alpha Crawler as well. We haven't even seen Alpha Crawlers in many series. I like how some of these figures actually go with the fire teams as well, the only Prometheans that we ever got. I do like this series. It does have some very good uh, figures, and the Marine was one of my favorites for a while. It's also very brown and, and, and black and, and gray. It's like looking at Swamp Water. Yeah, it's a bit of a... <laughs> yeah, we could call it the Swamp Water series. It is a bit of a wash, yeah. And we also get two quite unique armors. Like, I've not even seen those armors in many sets after this one. We've got the gold Protector Spartan and the pink Hermes Spartan. I mean, Halo 4 did come out with so many armors. I do like the fact that we got another pink Spartan. I, I love getting those pink mm. ones ever since yeah. the Hayabusa. The Protector itself, I don't like the helmets per se, because it's the it's same thing with weird. the Gunganeer. It's just a it, it's a blob, but at least yeah. it has a stripe, so yay, there's that. But mm. it's a decent figure. It is. They're both decent figures. And also credit to we've got another Halo Reach figure as well. Mega Constructs, I mean, they clearly know that Halo Reach is like... Pro I don't know if it's the most beloved game now. Certainly, like, I, I find on my community that the large majority of kids there have grown up with Halo Reach. It feels like their definitive game. So it's cool that Mega Constructs just continues to nod to those games. A Halo Reach EVA also comes with a Halo Reach assault rifle. Pretty interesting that we get two different molds of assault rifles in this set. For the Reach line, they would have orange Spartans to go Absolutely, with them. Absolutely, yes. So these are all sort of blending into sets in a very, very streamlined way. When you had all three of those Spartans, it was near impossible impossible to feel the bag and find out what the Spartan was without the code, because they all feel so almost identical, especially the fact that the assault rifle, DMR, and battle rifle are all very similar sized weapons. It was pretty difficult, and then we had two assault rifles as well. I remember this was a difficult one to sort of feel out. And then this Covert Ops Elite Fantastic. I love this Elite. I absolutely love it. And I've army built that Elite more than anything else in this series. The new Elite Ultra in Covert Ops Black. These two would make a pretty cool pair. It's half and half again. So, yeah. half good guys, half mm. bad guys. I love when they do. Especially that Flood form as well, because the Flood can take over the Spartans and then fight the Elites as well, or fight more of the Spartans. Yeah, it's really cool. Delta series also came with two chase figures. The Red Spartan Protector with a Railgun is really cool. Then we also had a Blue Elite, and that came with the Gold Protector as well, I believe. We're still in the narrative where a lot of the blind bags, when you got a chase figure, it came with another figure as well. So, to feel one of those massively chunky packs in a store was so exciting. It's tremendously difficult to find pictures of kids actually scoring both in one pack online. But yeah, Delta series, I'd say it's one of my favorite lineups from the ones we're reviewing today. If not my favorite, to be honest. Especially that flood form. Oh, it's so good. I gotta say, I think my favorite's going to be the next one. <laughs> Oh yeah, the next one. Well, we'll roll straight into that then, Brian. But one last note as well. I found this picture online of the original prototypes for Delta Series, and it seemed like the Elite was originally going to be a blue... Is that Pioneer Spartan with a plasma repeater? Then we're moving on to Echo Series. Echo! Echo! Yeah, Echo Series, a pretty outstanding one, but... I think renowned as the most difficult series to find out of any blind bag series that has ever been released. I would like to put out a witch hunt. I'm putting it out there. I want somebody who has that AC Arbiter to hit me up on Twitter or Discord. I've really been wanting to find that Arbiter for a long time. But yeah, Echo series, pretty interesting. Pretty interesting. We've got eight figures. They have started down a now continuing trend of advertising the AC figure on the packaging, like having it as one of the eight figures. I've had mixed feelings about that in the past, especially Infinite Series 1 and 2 blind bags, where the AC figure is on the packaging. It's a common figure, so like kids don't want to get so many AC figures. This one advertises the AC figure on the packaging. They did that in Series 1, 2, and 3, then Cortana, I guess, in Series Series 4, but then they stopped for a while. We've got four Spartans and a Marine against just an el two Elites and a Jackal. The Covenant don't stand a chance there. Well, technically, if you want to say the Arbiter, 
It, it's a bad guy in this. It, it, no, it, actually, it's the Halo 5 design, so that's a good guy too. Maybe this is the Swords of Sanghelios and the UNSC. They've just teamed up and they're about to go fight the remnants of the Covenant. So yeah, a uh, very interesting series. Obviously, the Oceanic is kind of whatever, because it's a typical green Spartan. Y yeah. You get why they put it in, but, I mean, it, it's just not the highlight of the sets. Yes. Everything else I kind of like, because bright colors, I mean, I love the, the purple sky. I love putting UNSC in, in the purple color, because it just kind of mm. feels backwards. That's mm. like a big uh, covenant color. Even though I don't like the white speckle, the Mark V looks really good in orange. The orange Noble Six is definitely a standout. It goes perfectly with the orange EVA from Delta series. I don't know about the Jackal. It's disappointing that it doesn't come with a shield. The Elite Ranger is really cool. I love the blue visor on the Elite Ranger as well. That sky blue color is pretty sweet. Then the Grey Marine, just good, but like in terms of army building, it's probably one of people's favorites. This is a very large assortment of weapons, but again, they're repeated quite a bit. We've got two carbines and two saws. Uh, everything else is different. I think there's a SOCOM and a pistol. I think they're both different pistols. I'll just say this while Simon's doing research. I personally love the copper uh, jackal because, uh, hey, more jackal. I felt like we needed it, and it's not blue again. We also have a smoke AC pilot, a purple aviator Spartan with an SMG. Pretty good, like pretty good. And I love that they're continuing down the smoke gray train. There's now three of them now, the ODST Emil and the Pelican pilot. That's pretty badass. I don't particularly have anything else to say about this series, Brian. I, I think when you look at that green oceanic, it's respective that like in the Halo Infinite blind bags now, we have green Spartans, but they're so much more interesting because they change the color of the limbs halfway down, the arms and the legs. A lot of them are metallic green yeah, too. So. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they look like washed out figures sometimes. The the green ones, I've never been a fan of green, but my my love has like been reignited now. Uh, Halo Infinite figures are metallic green. Absolutely the direction Mega Construct should have gone. You just had an army of these green Spartans, but it wasn't like the old sets where, oh, yeah. it's just the same Spartan. It's not a highlight, but there's nothing really wrong about it. Uh, yeah, that's pretty spot on. Echo series, what? What a, what a blind bag series, I don't know. Echo series kind of flew by. I don't know whether it was the timing of it. They were just about to jump into Halo 5. I'll have to check the exact years of these releases, but it's also quite difficult to see, especially when Echo series, you can tell it was elusive because it's not even listed on Mega Construct's website as a blind bag series. It's kind of the same thing as what series eight and nine did. They were yeah. too quick on moving on to the next series yeah. that it just had a very small window release. Yeah. Alpha to Foxtrot came out in pretty pretty quick succession, only a few years. We lead into the last of our alphabet journey. Alpha to Foxtrot. This is series Foxtrot. Now this one uh, has a very special place in my heart personally because Foxtrot blind bags were included in every single goodie bag for Bloxfest, my Mega Constructs gaming convention. Every single person got one of these blind bags in their goodie bag and there were so many translucent uh, chase figures going around Bloxfest that year. People were just trading them all over the place. It was chaos. I'll give credit to it being a pretty damn outstanding series. You get a lot of variants in this wave, especially that Covenant drone, which mm. finally got into Mystery Pack. So yeah. that was, like, easy to get. Exactly. I got a stupid amount of those drones. They need to bring those back. I know. I don't even care if it's an infinite. I just want them back. Well, the Halo 3 Marine Pack is still pretty easy to get your hands on. Well, We'll start with the ones that are on the packaging. We got an AC Carter. That is, that is freaking cool. My only Carter. Yeah. That kind of completes the Noble Six team if you want to look at it that way. All right, so we got another one of these like orange-esque Spartans, except it didn't come out as orange as it looked on the packaging. The JFO on this packaging looks like exactly the same as the previous two series orange figures. It looked like it was a last man standing figure, but then when you actually get it out of the packaging, it was yellow. It actually closely matches, except for the color of the visor, mm. to the ones that came in the spade set. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I could see Mega Constructs just switching up the colors slightly to match a new release. That makes sense. Then we've got a couple of figures that uh, definitely just got lost in the mix. The green veil, I was never a fan of, but the red Spartan with energy sword is fantastic. I love that Ooh. figure. Yeah. If you love red versus blue, you, you gotta get this guy. Yeah, I know. Foxtrot, uh, I, I really like this series. And that drone was also really detailed as well. We've got some examples in the past where like you have maybe a jackal that releases in a blind bag. 
and it's not the same quality as other sets it's released in. That drone was like top tier, really nicely detailed. Very vibrant blue wings on it. Copperhead fell away for me and so did the Aviator. I wasn't that impressed, but the Mark IV was exceptional. We gotta talk about the chase figures in this series, Brian. Oh my goodness. I hope you got the Stone Chief. Yes, I hope that's, that's the, the one, one you got. That Stone Chief, mwah. Phenomenal. They see the picture of that Stone Chief online, and I've seen people like, where is that from? And like, they can't believe it's from a blind bag series. It seems so random. And 343 had just released like the hunting trailer for Halo 5 Guardians, where it showed who was the real villain. Yeah, we also have a Gummy Elite Ranger. I, I have that one as well, and it is a fantastic figure. I do like Arctic figures, generally, so the, the Storm Grunt was fun by me. It's I wish I cool. got that Elite, I really do. I love it in orange, and I love getting Covenant things, so. I think I have a spare one. When I'm back in England, I, I, I could try and send that to you. And then we also have the new Energy Sword mold with that uh, Spartan Mark IV, which is epic. It's a quality series, Brian. I, I really like this series. Was this the first series to introduce the smaller pins on the helmet? Yeah, perhaps. Yeah, it might have been. It also brought in the new mold assault rifle with the Master Chief. Like, I thought it was a tiny assault rifle at first, but a really nice one. I really enjoyed that you could have the Elite and the Spartan sword fighting. Foxtrot! I, I love Foxtrot. I think it's fantastic, Brian. I do too. And that really brings us, ladies and gentlemen, to the end of part two of our Blind Bag series review. Part three, we'll just delve into pretty much every other one, I think. I think we'll just tackle them all at once. Brian, we need to pick our favorite series and our least favorite series. Which is your least favorite, Brian? Which is your least favorite? My least favorite? I kind of want to say it's Charlie, just because there's. I so... was gonna go for Charlie, bro. Yeah. Okay, good. Because uh, yeah. I, I think there's just too many Spartans in that. I mean, this yeah. is the time where the Elite is the big thing, the the new mold, and then we only mm. got one, and then the yeah. other figures is, you know, the active Jackal is cool, but I feel like that should have been in something else. There's no color matching at all. There's absolutely the opposite, every single color available. In no ways disappointing, but certainly one that I didn't army build anything other than the Elite. I think my personal favorites, I can't choose one. Bravo, the reason why I'm not saying it's the absolute favorite is because there's a lot of green in that, and I feel like mm. you could use a couple more colors, but you look at the selection of figures, you got yeah, so much yeah. like an army build. I said it before, but I really do like Echo. I love the colors oh. on that. I know it's got a lot of Spartans too, but the, the purple Scout, the white mm. Defender, the orange Mark Seven, the Elite Ranger, I mean, I just, I really love of those things. I would say my favorite is probably Bravo, but Foxtrot as a very close second place. Even the packaging has three UNSC in a desperate pit against all of those forces, all back to back surrounded by each other. And then we've got the Foxtrot, which just, it holds a very personal place in my heart, but I also think that drone is just so highly detailed, so many pieces. And then that Stone Chief is gonna go down in history as just a legendary figure. Brian, we just reviewed Alpha to Foxtrot. We did it! That's part two. Guys, I really recommend you check out part one where we reviewed series one to nine of the blind bags. Then it's Alpha to Foxtrot. Then next time we've got Challenger, Warrior, Maverick, Stormbound, series 10, Clash on the Ring, A New Dawn, Battle for the Ark, Infinite series one and two. That's 10 blind bag series that I think we're just gonna smash out in a bumper video next time. Thank you all for the support on this video and thank you so much for rallying us to make part two. I know that people have been really excited about this and I hope it lived up to the expectations. And I also want to give a huge shout out to halotoynews.com, Jang Bricks YouTube channel. We used a lot of screenshots from those different places and we thank you guys so much. It literally is unobtainable to find these images anywhere else. And I hope that we are now contributing to organization and like the library filing of these series to like go down in history. I hope people look back at these videos and are actually able to use them as like a stepping off point for their collection. Sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, Brian. Thank you very much for joining me today. I'll see you for Blind Bag Series Part 3. We're doing every single Blind Bag Series, baby. Ah! <laughs>